Well, hello, everybody. It's so great to be with you today as we have this leadership lesson over lunch. And um, today, I just want to talk with you a little bit about what are some greats that you can learn to be a better leader. And for those of you watching today, please give me about 10 to 11 minutes. That's all I'm asking. And uh, if you're taking notes, make sure you write these down because I'm going to be sharing with you 10 things that can make you become a great leader, whether it be with your family, whether it be in your job, maybe you own your own business, or maybe you're leading out in ministry, maybe as a group leader here at Waters Edge Church. I don't know, but I do know that these can be applied to you today. So if you're taking notes, I'm going to share with you 10 things that are great in a leader's, in a leader's life. So number one, if you're taking notes, the leader's, the leader's greatest victory the leader's greatest victory is victory over yourself. Plato once said this, the first and best victory is to conquer self. Conquer self. Every leader faces a struggle against self-interference, against self-centeredness. Yet, whereas followers tend to think of themselves first, leaders have to learn to put others before themselves. And so number one today, if you're taking notes again, the leader's greatest victory is victory over yourself. You got to get rid of yourself and you got to be able to pour in to other people. That's number one is victory over yourself. Number two today I want to share with you the leader's, the leader's greatest asset is confidence. That's right. The leader's greatest asset is becoming confident. Confidence in oneself is the cornerstone of successful leadership. Having confidence is the cornerstone of us being able to to be successful in leadership. Only those who believe in themselves have enough optimism to see that the best in those around them. Self-confidence breeds confidence in others. And here's what that means today. For those of you taking notes, is that when you have confidence of who you are and how God has created you and wired you, you're going to have the confidence to pour and to lead out in other, in other people. So that's number two today. The leader's greatest asset is confidence. Number three today I want to share with you is the leader's greatest weight. The leader's greatest weight is final response ability. All of us as leaders, as we make decisions every day, there's going to be a positive and a negative effect on the decisions that we, that we make. And I'm going to share with you a story about World War II. General Dwight D. Eisenhower was responsible for planning the Allied mission of France, invasion of France. He knew that thousands of young soldiers would be killed in the assault. He also knew that the invasion would be a pivotal point in the war against Nazi Germany. Success would be a tremendous boost to the Allied cause, but failure would be a crushing blow. In the hours prior to the attack, Eisenhower sat down and penned a press release to be used in the event that the attack should be, should be repelled. Our landings have failed to gain a satisfactory foothold, and I have withdrawn the troops. I've withdrawn the troops. My decision to attack at this time and place was based upon the best information available to him. Best information available to him. The troops, the air, and the Navy did all the bravery and devotion to a duty that they only could do. If any blame or fault attaches to the attempt, it is mine alone. Eisenhower knew to take responsibility particularly in the invasion of France. And so today, as a leader, as you make decisions, you have the responsibility that comes with that decision. And that could be a very, very heavy, heavy weight. Um, number, number four today, I want to share with you about the leader's greatest um, characteristics or things that we should have is the leader's greatest discipline. Taking time, taking time to think. I think in leadership, we often tend to make decisions pretty quick. But I think... For us today to remember to stop and pause and to think about decisions that we, are, that we are making. One of the reasons people do not grow as leaders is that they try to change the results without changing their thinking. I think as leaders we have to change our thinking if we want the results that we want to have. Our lives today are a result of our thinking yesterday and our lives tomorrow will be determined by what we think today. Let me repeat that. Our lives today are a result of our thinking yesterday and our lives tomorrow will be determined by what we think today. So what you're thinking about today is going to come to fruition tomorrow. So have that discipline, taking time to think. Number five, the greatest, 
the leader's greatest handicap, the leader's greatest handicap is pride. Is pride. Pride gives people an overinflated sense of their own importance and causes them to devalue the contribution of other people. Think about pride for a moment as, as a leader, is that can get in the way of you having the desire to lead in a better and more pos- positive way in the direction that God has you going. You must consider other people before yourself when we talk about leadership, y'all, and pride can get in the way of that. And many of you know the middle letter of the word pride, and it's the word I. It's an I problem. So leadership, you got to take yourself out of the equation in order to lead other people. The leader's greatest opportunity. You're probably wondering, well, Ben, when is that greatest opportunity going to happen in my life? Well, it could be. It could be today. It's in times that we're living in right now where leaders rise up above the occasion, above the circumstances we're in to be the best dad, to be the best mom, to be the best single parent, to be the best teenager, to be the best business owner, to be the best group leader, the best coach, whatever it may be. Today is the day for you to rise up and have the greatest opportunity that you've ever, ever had. What has happened in the past cannot be undone. Our strength lies in the present. We live in the present. We work in the present. So wipe the slate clean and look what's in front of us. I'm often told, hey, Ben, let's look through the windshield rather than the rearview mirror, particularly in a world that we're living in today. Look ahead. Look forward to what God wants for you today. Number seven, the leader's greatest loss is hope. One of the most powerful, energizing words in the English language is hope. And I tell you today, we as leaders, whatever you're leading in whatever environment, is you cannot, you cannot lose hope. Hope is a power that keeps us going in the toughest times of life. And one of the greatest characteristics of a leader is that they never, they never lose hope. They're always looking forward. As G.K. Chesterton once wrote, there's only one thing which gives radiance to everything. It is the idea of something around the corner. Something around the corner is going to happen in your life. You cannot lose hope. Number eight today, hope you're staying with me. Number eight today is the leader's greatest mistake. Putting self before others. Habitual self-absorption is a surefire recipe of ineffectiveness as, as a leader. And here's what I mean by that, is oftentimes we can be so consumed with ourselves that we forget about what the Bible also talks about, of considering other people before, before yourself. And so one of the mistakes we can make as a leader is making yourself all consumed with everything going around, your problems, your mistakes. It's all about you. It's kind of the martyr approach. Whereas in leadership, you have to remember it's about other people. And when you pour into other people, yourself is going to get refreshed and refined to be able to lead um, stronger in the environment that God has placed you in. From experience, I have learned that success is determined by the seeds we sow, not by the harvest we reap. So get out there and sow seeds with those people that are around you. Number nine, we got two more, y'all. Stay with me. Number nine, the leader's greatest prayer is wisdom. The book of James talks about wisdom, is that when we ask God for wisdom, he's going to give it, give it to us. And I know for me, there's been opportunities over the past two weeks, two to three weeks for sure, about asking God to give me wisdom in a time of leadership, because the Bible says that God will give it to us generously. He'll give it to us generously. God, you've made me a servant to be in such a place, in such a time as this. God, I need wisdom in making decisions. And remember, in those decisions, God is going to do big things in your life. So one of the greatest prayers you can pray today as a leader, if you're still watching, is ask God for wisdom, and he's going to give it to you. There's no greater joy than knowing that you have the wisdom of God as we make decisions and lead forward. And finally, number 10 today, the leader's greatest joy. I know it's mine. The greatest joy is adding value to others, learning to appreciate and thank those that consider other people before themselves and that you're impacted by them valuing other people. I have found that the richest, most rewarding aspect of leadership always involves relationships. Trophies are going to collect dust. Medals are going to collect dust. Championships are going to be won. There's always going to be another group to lead. There's always going to be another video to shoot. There's always going to be another meeting to attend. But I can tell you what truly lasts is the legacy that we etch into the lives of those around us. So today, I want to challenge you, the legacy you leave in your leadership, whether it be in your home or your business or your leadership here at Water's Edge Church, adding value to other people will be etched for eternity. So there you have it. Ten lessons you can learn today over lunch. 
Hopefully you can apply them. Again, 10 of them. Hopefully you took notes. If not, you're going to have to go back and rewatch this. Well, you guys have an incredible rest of your day. And um, man, I just pray for you. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, have a great rest of your week. And we hope to see you Sunday online. See you guys.